Thank you, thank you for coming. As Ken said, my name is Ihsan Sharifi and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of South Australia, Zero Waste Research Center for Sustainable Design and Behavior. <laughs> it's too much here, we call it SDB. Uh, yeah, well, the thing that I'm presenting to you today is a part of my PhD and a part of a bigger project uh, that we are working in the SDB Center on called Ebo Microclimate and it's concerned about the, the activity patterns in public spaces in Australian cities during the very hot uh, climate situations. Uh, well, we all know that the climate is getting warmer and we all know that uh, the, the heat waves are becoming more frequent and more intense in the recent years, uh, especially after the 2000. We have three, we had three uh, heat waves. We're gonna have probably more in the coming years. And uh, when the frequency of these heat waves are becoming more and more, and based on the CSIRO uh, predictions, we will, we're gonna have around two degrees centigrade in, increase in the temperature of Australia by 2070, which probably all of us will live by that, by that year. But, uh, well, it's the best scenario. If we go to, for the worst scenario, it would be around four to five degrees centigrade, which means that we're gonna uh, experience something around 50 degrees on those years, which is not uh, quite welcoming. Uh, well, this is about the uh, heat wave of 2013. And uh, if you see that the major cities in Australia, we're gonna see that Adelaide has the worst situation here. Uh, well, the, the more reddish means warmer, and we, uh, we see that uh, well, Sydney has a very bad situation. Melbourne, so so Perth, Adelaide is very severe, including its surroundings. And if we go into uh, uh, more detailed scales, smaller scales, we see more severe impacts of the heat. And uh, while well, these, these impacts are more inside the cities as well, so that two degree to four degree, five degree uh, increase in the temperature means a lot more in cities and means a lot more in the peak temperature. It doesn't mean that our peak temperature in 2070 would be 50, probably it would be 55, 56, or maybe more. This is about Melbourne. Well, uh, well, we are facing a, a phenomenon, we call it urban heat island effect, which uh, simply means that the highly urbanized areas are hotter than the pre-urban surroundings. Well, it's not equal in all the places. It's based on the climate and general climate, and it's based on many other features like the uh, physicality of the, space, the, the, the city and its location inside the surroundings. But it's uh, more or less common in all the big cities. And if you see, this is the summertime, this is the winter time. It's, it's uh, supposed to be more intense in winter, which is not a problem for us in winter because we, we probably like the space to be a bit warmer in winter. But in summer, it becomes a problem. Uh, again, in summertime, if you compare the Melbourne with the surroundings, you will see that more red are, are around uh, Melbourne up to Geelong and those. And the, the spaces which are more uh, built up tend to be warmer compared to the other areas. And this graph, should, this is the surface temperature, this is the air temperature, which shows that uh, uh, again in the Melbourne in 2009, the, uh, the air temperature in the city center uh, was around four or five degrees, uh, this is a degree centigrade, four or five degrees up to eight degrees more than the surroundings. Yeah, up to eight degrees. In London, it's also the eight degree. And in London, it's more intense because we have the Canary Wolf and we have the Westminster. All, both of them are very close, are in the city center. And both of them, ha uh, the, the, the Canary Wolf is eight degrees centigrade cooler than the Westminster, which is in the same area. So our question, our big question is why is it happening 
And why is that difference is so much intense? I mean, eight degrees centigrade inside the city is very much. Well, uh, the mass urbanization is a great contributor to the urban heat island effect, and the city centers are more vulnerable to the, to the, the heat island because they, uh, they accommodate more people inside themselves. So if, if anything special is supposed to be happening, it would be more intense in the city center, and the city center is warmer, and it contributes to that warmness more than the other areas. So the city center is that the kind of uh, twofold uh, effect and cause and effect in the heat island based on the literature. Well, we found that some, some interesting things in Sydney that some suburbs are well, warmer than the, the, the city center, but it's out of the discussion for now because we are talking about the general trend. So a CRC project uh, is, made to address that in Australian cities, so uh, focus on Adelaide, Sydney and Melbourne, and I'm a part of that down below. And my supervisor is a little bigger than me, John Bolland, he's sitting there. <laughs> so as I said, when you go through the smaller scales, the effect is more Again, the, the, the more uh, red uh, colors, which is, is a thermal scale, red color means warmer. And we, if we compare these two together, we see, we see that the streets are supposed to be very warm during that warm situation. This is uh, the 9th of February 2009, I think, or 7th, 6th of February 2009, which uh, Sydney faces a heat wave. And, uh, well, probably the most... Uh, problem maker spaces in cities are the streetscapes and the public spaces which we used to live in for the outdoor activities. So they affect us a lot in the city center. And why is it happening? Again, based on the literature that we have, we have the urban structure and landscape and surfaces and the way we live in the cities as a contributor to that extra heat. And uh, it's not that simple, it's very complicated. But in a simple way, the solar radiation coming to the city and it traps inside the mass of the buildings based on the character of the surfaces. They absorb the heat and they reflect, they delay in reflection of the heat to some time, to somehow. So the, the mass of the buildings keep the temperature in the, during a heat wave and it doesn't release the heat by the next day when again the sun comes up. So the, the night cooling cannot cool down the city as it should, and the next day would be warmer, and the next day would be warmer, and if, we, if it happened three days in sequence, we call it a heat wave, a severe heat wave. Uh, that CRC project has different uh, aspects. The aspect that we are working on it at the UniSA is the social aspects and behavioral aspects of that. And I'm part, my research is part of that. So we are dealing with people and the activities, the patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you ask yourself if, uh, if the temperature goes above 36, if it gets very hot, what should I do and what would I do? How many choices I have to go out for outdoor livings and how I choose them and why I choose them? Well, it's quite individual, it's quite personal, and different people react differently in this situation. Or probably, I want to go out, and my wife said, oh, I don't want to go out, it's too hot. And my son said, oh, it's lovely, let's go out. So different people behave differently based on their background literature and the culture and many other things. But if we want to have a general idea about what is happening in our cities, if, if you want to generalize these outcomes, these individual outcomes, we're going to go for a general uh, public, probably I would say, voting system, which means that uh, how many people are using that space during that temperature range, or how many people doing what in that temperature range, and they're going to have a general idea of what is happening in our public spaces during that very hot situation. So this is our, uh, our question for this research. The question that uh, uh, what activities are sensitive to the heat 
what outdoor activities are sensitive to heat, to extra heat in cities. And in order to answer that question, to approach that question, we do case studies in three Australian cities. This one is about the Adelaide, uh, but we have Melbourne and Sydney involved also. They have different situations, but uh, this one is only about Adelaide. And in Adelaide, we have, again, some cases, some public spaces, which we go there and we uh, do the uh, observation and data analysis and those things. The three spaces I, I present to you tonight are the Handmesh Square, Random Mall, and Hayek Plaza. Quite different. Very green, no green, and a shopping mall. So how we can compare them? Well, we can't compare them, frankly, but we can compare each of them with themselves. We can compare Hayek Plaza, hot Hayek Plaza, with normal Hayek Plaza, with cold, with cold Hayek Plaza, and see if the Hayek Plaza can uh, maintain its activities during the hot temperature, or it loses that, or what's about random or what about the Heinmarsh Square? Well, we take the, uh, the theoretical pain of the research from a theory of public space of public life. Many of you might uh, heard about that. This is uh, the young girl, or uh, girl architect's theory that they believe that more people in the public space, in a simple word, can attract more people to come in the space. So the, the theory uh, is uh, arguing that uh, frequency and number of people in public space can observe more people. And that's why, uh, based on this theory, they try to, uh, say, attract more people to make the, the space more, uh, let's say, vibrant and more successful and uh, improve the quality of for the public space. Based on this theory, we have three types of activities, which are necessary activities, the first part, which are those unavoidable activities, going from home to work or school or university or everyday shopping for everyday needs. These are unavoidable. Uh, optional activities which we choose to make them, like uh, say sitting or doing the sport or standing or meeting somebody. And the social activities, the third part, which are the effect of the, the two second one. I mean, a group gathering in the space or a music festival in the space or uh, outdoor playing in the space. So based on this theory, we have three, these three parts and based on the theory, only optional activities are sensitive to the climate situation, which is supposed to be, again, uh, well, the extra heat as well. So only optional activities are supposed to be sensitive to extra heat. But it's not, or we found it not. We have some terms here. One is the apparent temperature or real feel. You probably have seen this uh, term in the uh, weather forecast. So it's different from the temperature that the thermometer gets. Thermometer gets the temperature, the dry bulb, and we have the humidity, and both of them can affect people, and you will sense some different temperature. It's a quite complicated way to I uh, will calculate that, but this chart is much better than this calculation. Uh, well, <laughs> simply, it means that if the, the humidity is 25%, imagine a summer day in Adelaide, and the temperature is 38, you feel 42. You don't feel 38. That's why in Sydney, higher temperatures are less, uh, say, acceptable. You can't uh, tolerate with higher temperature in Sydney because the humidity is high. Well, we use this term in our uh, things, and I uh, talked about different types of activities. Well, uh, I monitored the three spaces through uh, February 2013 to February 2014, and uh, well, I. I put the number of activities which are happening, the necessary activities, I, I told you what kind of activities they put in necessary, what kind of activities they put in optional and social, and they put them in a graph. Uh, well, if you see the graph in a random mall, the necessary activity is walking, well, it's, it's rational. I mean, everybody walk in the random mall to go to somewhere. So, 
uh, but it doesn't uh, change based on the temperature. You know, you have low, you have high, you have you low, you have high. And the other interesting thing in random mode is that the temperature doesn't go above 35 because of the air conditioning, which are projecting the cool air in the area. <laughs> The other thing in Heimersch Square, which is the greener area, is that, uh, well, necessaries are random up to some point, and after that, they drop down. And optionals, again, up and down, and then they start to fade. In Hyde Plaza, even the necessary activities or start immediately from the ideal situation at 25 to 28 degrees, they start to decline up to some part which they become zero. You, you feel zero, 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 zero for optional, and they approaching zero for necessary activities. So the situation for uh, high plaza is very severe, whereas the random mole, partial problem, and the high plaza partial problem. We get into uh, some more detailed investigations, but at this stage, we found that, that the thermal sensitivity of different spaces are different. I mean, they start to lose their activities in some point, in some temperature, and that temperature is different for each space. For high mass square, is around 32 degrees, whereas for random mode it's around 30 degrees, but not for all activities. For high plaza, it's 25, it's 20, like I can say 26, 28, but it starts at the beginning. I mean, so each degree centigrade higher temperature in high plaza will uh, you know, uh, push people out. That, ran that necessary activities in random mode, which are not the subject of uh, the temperature, they didn't be affected by the temperature, they shift their patterns. 39 random mole, 27 in random mole. You see in the chart that they ha we have the same number of people, but you, you can't see them in here because they are walking in the shadow. But here you can see them. So. Uh, even if the necessary activities in, in spaces that random or that uh, have a lot of uh, well, walking and necessary things around, even if in those spaces uh, some features of the space can change the patterns of uh, activities. In more detail, I'm not sure that if you want to, to talk about these things. <laughs> well. Uh, I don't go very much in detail. Uh, but if you have a look at here, again, uh, this is about after the thermal threshold. We call it critical thermal threshold. The, 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 the thermal threshold where uh, after that point, the activities start to decline. 34 high marsh, uh, we, we put there with 32, 28 to 30 for random all, and for high plaza 26 to 28. And you can see that, uh, I mean, for random all, it start to come down, but it never get to zero for optional activities because of those uh, projector air, uh, you know, air conditioning that is coming through the space. And it, it keeps the space a bit cooler than it should be. Uh, but uh, in high plaza, again, as I said, it's very severe. It's getting to zero. The optional activity is getting to zero, even if from 32 degrees. So when the temperature in high plaza gets to 32, we have no people there in some points that we observed. Mm. We define a term here called thermal resilience. So we define it as, a as, a, as the ability of the space to keep its normal situation, its normal activities during higher temperatures. We call it thermal resilience. So based on what we said, the thermal resilience is very low in high plaza and is high in high mesh square and is high in random as well. The critical thermal threshold can vary based on the space. Because, because the space is not only sensitive to the temperature, it's sensitive to many other things, management of the space, you know, 
of the uh, surrounding activities, the supportive activities, the number of shops and the number of restaurants and many other things that are happening around the space. But uh, regardless of those, there is a thermal threshold for those spaces that are, they, they start to fade, uh, they start to lose the activities. And the optional activities based on the theory, they are highly sensitive to the heat stress, but necessary activities are also sensitive to the heat. They are more resilient, up to four to eight degrees more, resilient to uh, the higher temperatures, but again, they are sensitive. But uh, social activities, no, they are more sensitive to the management of the space and the, the type of activities which are happening in the space. Well, in summertime, we have people who are coming in the random and play with, uh, say, the water features and all those things. And in this uh, winter time, we have other activities that are happening around. We get to the, uh, the second part of our research, which, uh, well, in, in our background research, we found that the urban greenery is cooler than the higher, uh, the, it's cooler in higher temperature, which, is, which makes sense. We all know that. You, you shouldn't I shouldn't prove it to you. But uh, the question is that, is there any correlation between this thermal resilience, the ability of the space to keep its activities, and the amount or type of the greenery in the space? Is there any relevance? So if, if, we, if we say yes to this question, we would suggest that, well, if you, if you can uh, uh, make the space more, uh, more green, you should expect more people to come in the space, if we can prove that. It is very hard. I mean, uh, we, we calculate the, the, the amount of greenery in those three spaces. Uh, based on the i3 canopy, which is a very uh, simple software online. And uh, we found that, that uh, well, based on these three spaces, we can say that, yes, the greener space has more resilient to heat, which means that it's, it's more favorite by people in higher temperature. But it's not, these three are not enough to make a generalization about the space. So the next step of our research would be uh, investigating the same term of resilience in lower scales and in different spaces to say at least probably we, we need around 20 or 30 spaces to make a generalization based on them to say that well this is greener it has more people and uh, well the other step we have is to test it to s in Sydney and Melbourne and in some suburbs which we did but we haven't published anything based on them at the moment I didn't get into it so much detail if you want some detailed information I'm happy to answer that